This video shows you how to align your immersive monitor setup using Neumann MA1 multi-channel extension. Open the app and click on the arrow on the right hand side to proceed. On the following page, select the network interface that your loudspeakers are connected to. On the next page, you can enter your MA1 multi-channel license key to unlock the multi-channel extension. Click the key symbol at the top of the screen and enter your license key number. Click Continue and review your license information. Click the key symbol again to return. With your multi-channel license activated, you can now choose between various speaker layouts, ranging from stereo and stereo with bass management to immersive formats. For this demonstration, we chose 5.1.4. We deactivate external bass management so all loudspeakers run full range. Please note that the MA1 requires DSP-equipped Neumann Studio monitors. On the next page, we get a list of all Neumann Studio monitors connected via a network. Please review the list and if some of your loudspeakers are missing, hit the refresh button at the top of the screen. Count them again to see if the list is now complete. Now check the boxes for all loudspeakers you want to use in your setup. For each speaker activated, the input connection becomes visible. The default setting is automatic, which means digital and analog signals are accepted. If no SPDIF or AES3 signal is present on the digital input, the analog input is automatically selected. The next step is to assign each monitor its position in the room. This is only necessary for the initial setup. After that, MA1 will remember the loudspeaker's positions. You don't have to look up the serial numbers of your speakers. Simply click the Neumann logo. The respective monitor's logo will now start to flash. So let's go through the list and assign each loudspeaker its position in the room. Just locate the studio monitor that's flashing and assign its position in the drop-down menu, like so. Our system has two subwoofers. The one on the left is sub 1. The one on the right is sub 2. If everything is correct and each loudspeaker is assigned its position, an arrow appears on the right-hand side. If this arrow does not appear, you need to review your speaker assignments for mistakes. On the next page, we can save our hardware setup under a name. Let's say Room A. Save would only save the setup. Let's hit Save and Align, because we want to align our system in the following steps. Saving takes a little while because MA1 now contacts each loudspeaker in the system and checks if its firmware is up to date. Because we selected Automatic Input Mode, we get this message about AES3 or SPDIF connections. AES3 and SPDIF usually transmit two channels on the same cable. So, for cable runs A, B, C, D, E and F, the table shows us the channel assignment. Cable A carries the left and right signal. Cable B carries center and LFE. C has the left surround speaker and no audio on the second channel. That's because this loudspeaker is quite far from the right surround speaker and we don't want to run a cable between those two and because channel 2 for cable runs C and D is reserved for the rear surrounds in 7.1.4. The same goes for cable D with the right surround signal and no audio on the second channel. The ceiling speakers return to the usual left-right pattern. Again, this is only relevant if you use AES3 or SPDIF connections. If you use analog connections, you can simply ignore this chart. 
On the next page, you need to select your audio interface. The menu shows all ASIO devices in the system. Our demo system uses an MT48 with a merging HAPI2 converter, so we use the merging Ravena AES67 virtual audio device driver. It is important that the same device is used for the loudspeaker outputs and the microphone input. You can select the input channel for the microphone and you can select starting number for the loudspeaker outputs. The system now checks if the microphone input receives a signal. If not, there will be an error message. Make sure to apply phantom power on the microphone input. In our case, everything's all right, and the system proceeds to the next page to enter the serial number and calibration code of our MA1 microphone. You can find this information on the microphone itself or on a small card that came with the microphone. The next step is the output signal level adaptation. Here, we see the layout of the loudspeaker setup. The monitors on ear level are solid. The ceiling speakers are just outlines. The subwoofers are displayed in a box, irrespective of their actual position in the room. Hit start to initiate the output signal level adaptation. The loudspeakers are muted during this routine, so you don't have to listen to any of those annoying test signals. If all loudspeakers receive their signals at the expected level and on the correct channel, you get a success message. Now, don't hit restart, but go to the arrow on the right-hand side to proceed. The system reminds you to keep the output levels of your audio interface unchanged. Hit continue. On the next page, you have to enter your listening distance. Ideally, the two front loudspeakers and your listening position form an equilateral triangle. In our demo room, this is fairly large, 360 centimeters. With the measurement microphone at your listening position, the software now checks if your room is quiet enough and if the signal to noise ratio is sufficient. For this, MA1 will play back a fairly loud test signal, so protect your ears. The test was successful. We have a good microphone level and the signal to noise ratio was sufficient. If that's not the case, the noise will be played back again and you can readjust the microphone preamp gain for another measurement. We're fine, so we can proceed. The system now generates the test signal for all speakers. This can take a few seconds. Now we can proceed to the actual measurements. Here you can specify a short delay so you can get out of the way before the measurement starts. Two seconds is enough for us. When the measurement sweep begins, you must remain quiet and make sure there are no outside noises. The measurements at the listening position are completed. You could skip additional measurements, but that's not recommended. For better precision, 
MA1 evaluates seven points around your listening position. The system tells you exactly where to place the microphone. The positions depend on the listening distance we entered before. Measuring multiple loudspeakers in seven positions takes a while, so we sped up the video. In reality, this takes about 15 minutes. Great, we're done. If you get a warning about signal clipping, or if there are outside noises during the measurements, you can repeat all measurements, or you can just repeat the last measurement. We're fine, so let's go on. The system now analyzes the measurements and computes a target curve that's appropriate for your room. ME1 has room mode recognition, so it knows which deviations from the target curve cannot be corrected. For instance, if a dip is caused by cancellation, it cannot be cured with a corresponding boost, because no matter how much you boost that frequency, it will still cancel out. MA1 is much smarter than that. Its algorithms are based on decades of experience, so it considers many variables and does what an acoustics expert would do. Here's the result. We see the room adaptive target curve in orange. And the average response of all loudspeakers in white. The gray curve is the subwoofer response. Please note that the subwoofers are measured and corrected full range. So if you apply a subwoofer signal that's band limited to say 120 Hertz, you get a clean slope and a smooth transition. If you want to have a look at the uncorrected response, you can deactivate automatic alignment. But for now, let's just save the alignment. Now, enter a name. Let's simply call it flat. The software now uploads the alignment data to all loudspeakers in the system. This can take a little while. We're done. If you want to, you can now edit the target curve by clicking the pencil symbol and create additional variations. But for now, we're happy. As you've seen, using MA1 multi-channel is fairly easy. The software guides you through the process to give you the best possible sound in your room for your immersive projects.